Hey everybody, Jonathan Baylor back. And I am, I am very, very excited about today's show. And I know I always say that, but I am especially excited for today's show because I just met this amazing woman. And I say amazing because I think somehow we're, we're, we got separated at birth somehow because I, I, I got connected with her. She's a PhD in holistic nutrition. She's a certified uh, clinical, she has a clinical nutrition certification and she's a registered clinical nutritionist. She's got a master's in business administration. She has a BA in psychology. And most importantly, I signed up for her, you know, her email program here. And I have never seen ever, ever an email that so resonated with me than the very first email I got with her from her, which just jumps right into the science, right into the stats and breaks down the fact that dieting, just starving yourself fails, has been proven to fail more than 95% of the time is a $20 billion industry based on failed approaches. And she is committed to getting the science out there and letting food be your medicine. So I, I, I couldn't be more excited to introduce you to Lisa Best. Lisa, welcome to the show. So happy to be here. Lisa, let's start from the very beginning here because I want to understand what led you on this path of evidence-based nutrition and using food as healing. So how did you go from little Lisa to the superwoman you are today? (laughs) Well, living in nature and natural health is just a part of our family culture. We live out on an exotic animal farm in rural North Carolina and in a log cabin that my husband built 35 years ago. Um, We use solar power. We uh, grow organic. uh, We have an organic garden every year and we have we raise organic chicken eggs, um, and at one point we had up to 200 exotic animals on the farm. So having being involved with animals and life and nature is just a big part of who we are. Uh, we even had uh, educational groups come out to teach about to teach them about how to interact with nature and animals. And um, I homeschooled my children here for a part of my life and um, a part of their lives. And uh, just being in nature and finding natural and easy ways to heal the body is just part of part of what we do. But ironically, I did not start this way. I, again, you read my bio. I, I started with an MBA. I was a financial planner and investment advisor. And uh, when my two older kids were born, I realized that um, I wanted to be home and I wanted to be have an active part in their life and in their growth. So I switched to real estate investing, and I spent 20 years buying and selling uh, properties and fixing them up and renting them out. And then in 2008, there was this little economic crash that happened that totally devastated the real estate market. So I took that as a sign from the universe that it was time to follow my passion and go back to um, school and get my degrees in natural health. So I, I've, I'm an old hippie. I have always loved natural health. I, I meditated and took yoga classes. I've been a runner. I used to hang out at all the health food stores in the 70s. So it's nothing new. And my kids joke at me constantly. My office is absolutely filled to the top with books and research papers and health reports from uh, health magazines uh, about ways to be healthy naturally. So um, it was just a natural uh, event to move back into or to make a career out of what my passion already was. Lisa, you're definitely living on passion, and I can tell because the the information you put out resonates with truth and with uh, sincerity. And often, sometimes the truth can be, to paraphrase Al Gore, inconvenient. And it it seems like we have been given uh, a lot of misinformation if we just look at the failure rate of what we've been doing. So, so two questions, Lisa, based on your your education, your experience, and just your insight. Why is it? that in the face of this 95 plus percent failure rate, a 108 plus million people trying to diet, not, fa- or not succeeding, exponentially rising rates of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, there are still, there are still supposed healthcare professionals that are just telling people to diet harder. Well, I agree with your uh, initial analysis that we must have been separated at birth because when I've read the information that you've written about dieting, it was like, oh my goodness, this is exactly the book I would have written if I had the time to write the book yet (laughs) on on dieting. But this issue is also extremely pertinent for me because I um, have struggled with weight my entire life. And when I went back to study nutrition, I lost 65 pounds 
as, uh, as a result of instituting a diet very similar to the one you're recommending, natural, whole, raw, organic, non-GMO, non-processed foods. So I think the problem is, and I'm totally in agreement with you, that the processed food industry and its existence now is creating foods that are not real foods. They're not live. They don't generate nutrition. And the obesity rates and the illness rates of cancer, diabetes, uh, and cardiovascular disease are just are directly related to the dietary input that we're, we're putting in. Lisa, so, why? Oh, go ahead. No, keep going. Keep going. I was just going to say, so the misinformation out there is the conflict of interest in business. And again, having a career and understanding capitalism and business interests, there are food companies and food production companies that are that were very quick to jump on the idea of producing fast, easy to fix foods for people in both restaurants and in packaged foods. And in the business model, they have really responded to what we have asked them to do, create something that's, that's quick and easy. And quality of the food was never the focus. So it's going to take an, a movement from people like you and, my, you and me to get companies to start producing foods that are healthy because they're not motivated to do it now. The, the demand right now is for cheap, cheap, quick, and fast. Lisa, I'm, I'm right there with you. And I'm, I'm also encouraged because it does seem like the industry will respond if the demand is there. Look at uh, gluten-free, for example. So regardless of the scientific or lack thereof validity of certain gluten-free products, the point I'm making is the idea of gluten-free was foreign in the mainstream 10 years ago. Now, if you get on an airplane, you can specify gluten-free. And there, I don't know how big the industry for gluten-free things are, but it seems to just have sprung up overnight. So it does seem like there's hope if we can drive the demand. What do you think? There's definitely hope. And again, being an old hippie, hippie in the 70s, I remember when there was one natural food store in a 100-mile radius. And now, in, in even my small area, we have one. And in larger cities, there'll be eight or 10 in a, in a several block radius. So that's telling you that people are wising up. People are understanding that if we don't eat better and get the right fuel in our bodies for growth and, and healing, we're just going to wind up being sick and fat. So um, I think it is a, a, um, a slow process, but it is a very, uh, I'm very optimistic that people are wising up. And I'm finding in my practice, I also do health coaching uh, on phone or on or by phone or on Skype, and when I talk with clients and, I, and who are dealing with health issues, I find that the ones that are the most motivated to make the changes towards healthy food are the ones who are already in pain, the ones who are already experiencing high blood pressure or diabetes or cancer. And um, I, my goal or my passion is to make it so that we don't have to get to that level of degradation of the system before we make these changes in diet to, re to restore our health and wellness. Speaking of degradation of the system, I, one uh, group of individuals who I, I so often hear that they've, they've started to switch to this whole food, nutrient-dense, high-quality plants, high-quality animals-based lifestyle, but they're still not necessarily seeing the results they want, or at least not as quickly as they want. And this is especially a females who are in the pre- or, or post or in the midst of menopause. Do you have any insights into additional things or an explanation as to why this seems to be a uniquely challenging time period in one's life to achieve the health outcomes we want? Being that demographic myself, I certainly do. Um, when you hit uh, the hormonal fluctuations of perimenopause and menopause, Everything goes bananas. And at that point, uh, I, I personally started working with an alternative physician to help me figure out the hormonal imbalances of thyroid, ad adrenals, um, reproductive hormones that are fluctuating. And as each of those fluctuate, it influences the other. And weight loss becomes absolutely at a standstill, at least it did for me. So um, I, the, what I would suggest to those people is to start looking at um, finding a good alternative physician who can help them work out any hormonal imbalances that may be going on. And then by all means, it is still essential to stick with the um, very healthy, whole, raw diet as well. But one thing that some of us 
over 50 have to have to realize is with age comes a change in the body. So you, you really can't logically expect the body to respond the same way it did when we were 20. You know, we, we have to adapt to that, except that we may not be exactly the same. Although I still run sprints and lift weights and um, do yoga and do all of the things that I did at a younger age. I just do it at a little bit uh, slower pace. Lisa, once again, the separation from birth, you're going stream of consciousness right now. And you just said sprints, weightlifting and yoga. <clears throat> Those are my three favorite forms of exercise and three of the most effective. So, so I love that, Lisa. And I love <clears throat> that you brought up the, the, the points you did about that time period in life, because one of the certainly there are some challenges associated with it. But one of the amazing things I've seen is that it is it is during that time period where individuals see just head on that this can't be about just eating less and exercising more because I cannot tell you how many brilliant women, I mean, people like you with your PhDs, advanced degrees, there's no lack of intelligence or drive. They're like, Jonathan, I'm eating 1200 calories per day. And I, I swear to God, like I'm eating 1200 calories per day. <laughs> it is, and I'm, I'm gaining fat. There has to be something else going on here. And it's, it's almost like you get that, that level of frustration where it enables you to break free from these myths and calorie dogma and finally see that truth and then hopefully pass it on to future generations. What do you think? Well, I'm in total agreement. And, and it is true, especially as you get older, that if you don't balance the thyroid, if the thyroid is not working and the metabolism is not being told what to do properly, there's no way you're going to lose weight. And, and I, I, I got over 200 pounds. Uh, with that exact same problem, no matter what I ate, I, would, I cut down to 700 calories a day and would not lose weight. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But what I had to do was uh, exactly what your plan suggests, uh, quite brilliantly, I would add, is to um, add calories, add good, whole, nutritious foods that are giving your body the nutrients it needs, and then also exercise and, and get those hormones balanced because it's uh, virtually impossible to lose weight as an older person if, you're, if your metabolism is dysfunctional. Lisa, in our conversation before the call, it, it was very clear to me that you're a very caring individual. And also you're hearing your history of being a, a hippie. I can imagine that you have a very big heart. And I, I need your advice. And hopefully this is advice for the listeners as well, which is I, there, are, there are many, many people in the world who simply say, eat less, like just eat less. You're not trying hard enough, eat less. And, and I, I say to these individuals, I say, here we have brilliant people. We have brilliant people who are eating a thousand calories per day and are not seeing the results they want. Are you calorie counter advocates truly saying that these people just need to eat 600 calories per day? Like how it, it, it it almost makes me angry because it's such a, it's like looking at someone who has been uh, afflicted with some sort of a terrible disease and just being like, try harder to get healthy. What's wrong with you? How do we, how do we react to these, these individuals that seem so steeped in the conventional calorie dogma? Oh my goodness. It's not just calories. It's everything. It's approach to statins. It's uh, approach to diabetes. It's, it's everything. So it, um, weight loss is just one of the many factors that I get so frustrated about the conflicting and what I feel is incorrect information that's out there. But uh, pertaining to weight loss especially, um, the evidence just does not support that low-calorie diets work. And uh, I know personally that metabolism and thyroid function drops up to 50% every time you cut calories. So if you're constantly diminishing the effectiveness of your thyroid every time you cut calories, your body thinks you're starving to death. Um, that's just the mechanism that help, helps humans survive for millions of years. Is when food's not there, everything shuts down so the body doesn't die. So it's only logical that if you continually cut calories, the metabolism keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. It becomes harder and harder to lose weight in the future. The system just doesn't work. And going back to a diet that is nutritious, whole, natural, organic foods makes so much more sense. And you're not hungry all the time. And um, weight loss may be slower than if you completely cut calories for a long time. But it, it works. I mean, I'm living proof. I've lost 65 pounds that way. And when you say you've lost 65 pounds that way, Lisa, are you 
consistently hungry, cold, and tired? Or are you maintaining that weight loss, eating regularly, and having an enjoyable, sustainable life? I eat regularly all the time. But, but see, regular for me is not mainstream. Regular for me is a nice portion, uh, four to six ounces of a healthy lean protein, over a half a plate of leafy green vegetables, raw vegetables, raw fats and avocados. Um, I don't eat that many grains because I'm sensitive to gluten, but I know that there are people that, you know, there are, there are 7 billion people on this planet with 7 billion diets, uh, meaning foods that will work for them. So there are some foods that are helpful and healing to me that are toxic and poison to you. So in my case, I don't, I can't eat a lot of grains, but there, there are vegetarians and people that rely on them. So I'm not trying to make a judgment about one food being better than the other. They're all, um, each of us are individual, but, um, I would certainly uh, recommend, uh, not cutting out all the calories and trying to live on a decreased calorie diet. It just doesn't work. Lisa, this is, this is literally gold, and I so appreciate you sharing this message. And I know you have actually a bunch of cool resources that individuals can take advantage of to get more of this information and get this information on a daily basis. So what's, what's next for you and your consultancy, and, and where can folks learn more about you? Well, I, um, I was so concerned about the conflicting information that is out there about health, and, and I had so many resources of from from um, major U.S. prestigious universities that are just not getting out there into the mainstream. So I developed uh, an app called Health Tip of the Day that's available for iPhone and also for Android um, that provides one daily piece of information uh, that you can use to uh, naturally and easily increase your health. Uh, I find that over the long term, small, easy steps towards uh, health is a much more productive way to make lifelong changes than trying to start some radical program that you get frustrated with and drop. So I thought having that access on a phone would make it very easy for people to see the information that I found. Probably 75% of the tips are based on research and the rest are based on successful um, clinical protocols that I found people use to, say, reduce diabetes or to uh, help with cancer treatments. So um, the app is one way. Um, I also write a weekly e-zine called Health Tips Weekly. Um, and my website is healingwithholisticnutrition.com. So um, I would love for people to contact me if you have suggestions of information you'd like to have or if you would like to have some health coaching, I'm available for that as well. And listeners, again, Lisa is... <laughs> Lisa, we got to get together in person at some point because this this healthy tip of the day, listeners, you'll be familiar with our uh, our, our slim is simple health tips that we released a while back, and they're there. If you like those, you're gonna love Lisa's tips because they're not tips like eat one less saltine cracker, and over the next twenty years, you'll lose twenty pounds. <laughs> they're these they're 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 like facts. They're like little bits of science. They're like little science bites, which are wonderful, and I love them. So, Lisa, again, what is the name of that app? Health Tip of the Day. Brilliant. And again, the website where folks can learn more about you? Is Healing with Holistic Nutrition. Well, Lisa Best, MBA, PhD, CCN, thank you so much for joining us today and for dedicating your life to not only human betterment, but also just getting the truth out there, which is awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful conversation with today's guest, Lisa Best. Again, be sure to check out healingwithholisticnutrition.com where you can get information on Lisa's app and easing, which is awesome, simple science. And we can never have too much of that. So remember this week and every week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Chat with you soon.